Hi everyone, Crafty Crime here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am not going to be talking about criminology, but rather activewear, <laughs> because it's my channel and I can do what I want, and it's not like I have an audience anyways. Now, in the current Fitfluencer era, I just feel like there are so many options out there and it's so hard to find unbiased reviews. Like when I started my fitness journey back in like 2018, it was just Gymshark, and they do not make them like this anymore. I actually still really like this bra, but now there's not only Gymshark, there's Bunny and Alpha Lead and Balance Athletica and whatever the heck else. And they're all like $60 for a pair of leggings and $50 for a sports bra and that just doesn't cut it for me. And I even ended up getting rid of the few Gymshark leggings that I owned. I think one was from like the Dreamy line, which again, they don't make anymore. Because I realized that I didn't even really like them. I was just being influenced by creators that I liked and the massive influence that the brand had back then. So when I got back into fitness this January after nearly a two year break, not only because of the global illness, but also because I somehow tore my pec minor while getting a weighted blanket off from the top of my closet and and also got diagnosed with exercise-induced vasovagal syncope, I made it my mission to find affordable activewear that was good quality, that was not just drop shipped, and that I actually liked. And that is when I discovered the Airy Offline Collection. This video is not sponsored. I wish it were. Please, Airy, I'm a huge fan. But when I first discovered this line earlier this year, I feel like there was not a huge review presence surrounding them. Like, apparently their cross-waist leggings are big on TikTok or something, which is an app that eludes me and I believe defines the generational divide. But being big on TikTok doesn't mean anything to me. Like, I want to know how it's going to hold up in the gym. The only unbiased and in-depth review review at that time that I was able to find was from Katherine Mueller, and I'll link that below in the description. But that video is almost two years old at that point, and also her and I have very different body types. So today I'll be talking about some of the collections within the offline umbrella, trying them on, talking about the kinds of workouts that I feel comfortable wearing them in, etc, etc. Now I usually go to the gym between three to six days a week although I have not been for the last three weeks, uh, oops. I don't do any cardio because it makes me pass out, but I usually do a pretty typical push day, pull day, leg day split, and sometimes I'll do a yoga class here or there as well. Now, I can't give you my actual measurements because I don't own a measuring tape, but I am five foot eight with most of that height in my legs, and I'm very just like straight, even though I'm not flat, vertical, I'm built like a ruler, okay? I usually wear a 34A in bras, and I'm usually an extra small or small in tops. And my bottoms, which I prefer to be very high-waisted, I'm usually a 24 or 25 or a 0 or 2. However, every single item I'm going to talk about today is a size small. Not sure what it is, I've never even tried an extra small in any of these. I'm just usually a small in activewear, and that translates to this as well. And also for my leggings, I prefer them to be full length, so because I'm pretty tall, I've ordered all of these in a long inseam. I feel like so many Fitfluencer brands nowadays are just like, here is your 7 eighths inch inseam and you are going to like it. So having short, regular, and long inseam options on almost all of the leggings is another great thing about this brand. There's also a lot of different inseams for their biker shorts. I believe they usually come in 4 inch, 7 inch, or 9 inch, but the ones I'll be showing here today are all 7 inch because anything shorter than that rolls up on me. One last thing before we get into it is is that you should never pay full price for any of these items. Aerie almost always has a sale going on, and if you're a student, Unidays has a 20% off code that actually stacks on top of these sales. So for example, just last week they were doing a sale where sports bras and buy shorts were $20 each. So with that Unidays code, they ended up being $16 each, which is much more affordable than some of those other brands. All right, with all that being said, let's get into it. So Aerie seems to have six major lines under their whole offline umbrella. They have Real Me, which I'm also including Real Me Extra under this, Goals, The Hugger, OG, God, it's, it's hard to put four fingers up like this, Seamless, which also includes Ribbed for my purposes, <laughs> and 
warm up, which is like a thermal collection. I'm gonna be talking about three of these lines today, which are Real Me, Goals, and Seamless. I feel like these are the most popular ones. Um, I don't own anything from any of the other lines, and also I live in Florida, so I don't think I will ever own anything from the warm up collection. So let's start with the Real Me collection. This is arguably their most popular collection and is where their famous TikTok crossover leggings spawned. I've heard the leggings in this collection frequently compared to Lululemon Aligns, which I have no frame of reference for that comparison given that I've never even walked into a Lululemon, let alone purchased anything from one. But they are more of that kind of brush fabric and don't really have any sort of compression. I have two cats. These leggings definitely pick up cat hair. I can usually lint roll it off fairly easily, but you can't really just like brush it off with your hand, you know? So I do not wear these leggings on leg day. I mean, I've never really tried to, but they're not that kind of like compressive material that's going to stay up really well when you squat or whatever. But I do wear these for push day, pull day, and for yoga. Ugh, maybe I can do one of those cool like transitions. So starting off, these are the Real Me high-waisted leggings in the color Olive Days, and these are in a size small long. They're just like the normal kind of leggings, no cross waist or anything. They do have a front seam, but I find it to be very non-invasive. They're buttery soft, again pretty low compression. Airy does describe these as being pretty light support and made to play, whatever that means, which I would say does hold pretty true. The glute seams aren't like quite straight across, but compared to what some of the Fitfluencer brands put on, they might seem that way, but I don't really care about glute enhancement or whatever. I wouldn't say they're the most squat proof, but Aerie also doesn't claim that they're squat proof like they do with some of their other lines. By the way, I'm doing these squat tests with a seamless nude thong um, also from Aerie. I usually just wear a seamless cheekster when I go to the gym because I hate wearing a thong when I work out, but I do wear a thong on leg day, so I figured I should do the squat tests in that to keep it consistent. But yeah, overall, I really like these. I think they're great for anything but leg day. I mean, I can wear these in the Florida heat and humidity and not feel like I'm dying, so that's really saying something. They retail for $44.95, but at the time of recording this, they're currently on sale for $33.71. And again, I'm pretty sure I've gotten them for around $27 with the student discount. And to go with the leggings, I also have the matching sports bra. I used to hate matching sets, but then I started going to the gym at 6 a.m. and it's just easier for my brain to pick out a matching outfit. Now something I like about Aerie is that their colors are pretty consistent. So I can go on the website and search Olive Days and it will show me all of the products in that color so you can mix and match between different lines. But this is the Real Me Strappy Back Sports Bra. It's just kind of a basic long line sports bra. Sometimes I take the cup pads out of my sports bras but I find that these bras in particular in the Real Me line can get get kind of like nippy if I'm not wearing the cup pads, which I'm not a big fan of. Also, a lot of their sports bras have color coordinated cup pads, which I really appreciate because sometimes when you take them out to wash the sports bra, it can be kind of hard to find which one they go to again. They are just the circle kind though, which can look kind of weird on lighter colored bras. They're made from that same buttery fabric. They're definitely like a light to medium support. You know, I'm not worried about like falling out of them. Um, It's probably just the light support though if you have a larger bust than me, which isn't hard. <laughs> However, what I really like about this bra is that I can take it off just by, you know, like slipping the strap off and stepping out of it. Now that's probably not the case for someone who isn't built like a ruler, but there's nothing I hate more than struggling to pull a sweaty sports bra off over your head. So being able to step out of it is a big win for me, especially because I'm already getting sweaty filming this and we're only on the first outfit. One thing I will say though, is that because the straps are so thin, they might cut in a little bit. It's never really bothered me because again, it's that same like buttery soft fabric, but it can definitely happen if you're a bit more built than I am. So just be aware of that. This sports bra retails for $34.95 and is currently on sale for $20.97, which is where I would say their sports bras typically fall into that like $20 range. So next up is the Real Me high-waisted crossover legging. These are the exact same legging, just with a cross waist. Again, I had them in a size small long, 
They still have a front seam, again, it's pretty non-invasive. The cross waist is kind of like this fold over. I'm not sure if that's how other brands do it. It's not the most high-waisted in the world, um, your belly button is like right there. One thing I will say is that I believe they're phasing these out in favor of the Real Me Extra line, which I'll touch on in a bit. But yeah, on the website right now, they only have these in black like I have, and then in like two patterned prints. Although I think they were more in the clearance section, just not in my size. Because these aren't the most compressed, I do have some issues with the cross waist staying up. Like it's not really an issue if I'm sitting at like the lat pull down or whatever, but if I'm doing anything standing, I do find myself pulling them up a bit. They do have a very flattering shape, but I find myself wearing these more in my daily life than I do to the gym. Again though, if I do wear them to work out, I won't wear them on leg day. Like the previous leggings, they retail for $44.95, but are currently on sale for $33.71. So this sports bra is one of their newer releases. It's the Real Me Ruched sports bra in the color Royal Berry, but this one comes in a lot of cute and bright colors for the summer. Now this is the same fabric as before, but the straps are a lot thicker, so it's less likely to dig in. It has this really cute back detail as well. I'm not the most comfortable doing things that require like bending over in this bra, like yoga. I don't feel like I'm gonna fall out or anything. It's just a lot lower cut than I'm used to. It's light support. I think that if I had a larger bust, I probably wouldn't be comfortable wearing this. And unlike the last bra, I'm actually not wearing the cup pads with this one because for some reason I find that it gets a little less nippy. I think there's just more fabric in that area due to the ruching. And I mean, does this not just look exactly like the Alphalete Amplify bra, even in the back? But instead of being $52, this one retails for $34.95 and is currently on sale for $26.21. So there you go. Next up, I have the exact same pair of leggings, but this time as shorts. I don't even know if you can see that. Here, I'm on my tippy toes. Literally the exact same thing, except that these are shorts with a seven inch inseam. I like six or seven inches because it doesn't roll up on me. I always see people being like, why do my shorts always roll up on me? And they're wearing like three or four inch inseam shorts. Like you gotta at least get it partially over your quads and then that won't happen. Now again, I think these are largely being phased out in favor of the Real Me Extra, but they also just introduced these Real Me ribbed shorts, which are this same short in the bottom part, but the cross waist is ribbed. So hypothetically, it's more compressive and might not suffer from some of the same rolling down issues. Again, I don't think there's much to say here that I haven't already said. I don't really wear these on leg day, but I do wear them in my daily life a lot outside of the gym as well. I think they're very flattering, again, with the cross waist. They retail for $34.95, but are currently on sale for $26.21. I like how the shorts are actually cheaper than the leggings. Some brands make them the same price, even though you're paying for like a third of the fabric. I'm always just like, why? So finally, I have the Real Me Extra Pocket Bike Short, and this is in the color Marbled Blue. Now, the only major difference here is that these ones have pockets. I would put my phone in there, but that's what I'm using to film this video, so. But yeah, it can comfortably fit a regular iPhone. Um, I have the 13. I don't know about the pros though. I think maybe you'd be able to fit it in there. I don't really have preferences about pockets in my leggings either way, but they're nice to have. Now, I have seen some people in the review saying that they've had issues issues with the stitching on these shorts coming apart, especially in that pocket area. I've never had an issue, but maybe it's better to avoid the pocket ones if you're worried about that. Again, there is a front seam, but it's pretty non-invasive. This might just be anecdotal, but I find that the cross waist on these stays up better. Like I don't find myself adjusting as much. And I think maybe the cross waist feels a little bit more compressive in this one. I can't exactly tell. These retail for $39.95, so a bit more expensive and are currently on sale for $29.96. I'm going to talk about the sports bra at a later time because it's actually from a different collection. So that goes back to what I was saying earlier about how you can mix and match colors from different lines, which I really like. So next we have the Goals line. Now this is their compression, high impact, traditional workout gear. Sometimes they make some uh, 
interesting choices with the styles, but these are going to be very supportive and great for high impact workouts. So first up, I have the Goals High Waisted Legging. Again, I have these in a small long, but I kind of wish I had them in just the regular because I feel like with the long, there's a little too much fabric. And then when you're like pulling it up because these are so much more higher waisted than the other ones, it's just a little awkward. I'd maybe stick to the regular inseam for this one. Some people would also say to size up with this collection, but I think that's maybe just advice for people who aren't used to high compression leggings. Like at least compared to how my old Gymshark leggings used to be, these are not as compressive as that. So I would probably stick to the same size if you want high support. This fabric is described as being smooth and slick, and I can definitely attest to that. I can brush cat hair right off of them. They have no front seam, and I don't have any problems with camel or Barbie crotch with these. They don't move at all. They're very squat proof, and I always wear these on leg day. One weird like quirk, I guess, about these leggings is that they have no bottom seam. Um, it's a raw cut hem, which I mean, I don't think has ever really made a difference with these leggings. If anything, that's one less seam that can come apart, but it, it's an interesting choice. Sorry if you can hear my cat going crazy on his toy. These retail for $54.49, so they're a bit more expensive. They're currently on sale for $41.21, but I've seen them as low as the 30s range. And to go with these, I am just wearing the Goals sports bra. I know they don't have this color anymore and the black and the white are currently on clearance for $19.97, but it retailed for $39.95. So the Goals line overall is more expensive than the Real Me line, but I think that's just due to the compression fabric. It's the same fabric as the leggings, very high compression, high support. Now, I mean, again, anything compressive feels high support to me, given that I'm an A cup, but from what I saw in their reviews, people also said that they fe felt pretty well kept in in these. These specifically didn't come with cup pads, they're just double lined. So sometimes I maybe get a bit of nippage, but it's nothing compared to how the real me fabric is. I have had other gold sports bras though that have come with cup pads, so... I don't know. I really like the detailed back on these. The whole bra clasp doesn't really do anything for extra compression, I don't feel, but I think it's quite cute. And because, again, they have thicker straps, they don't really dig in. Now these are the Offline Goals 7-inch bike short. Again, it's the exact same legging, just as a short. You can also get them in a 4-inch inseam or a 9-inch inseam. And they also have versions with pockets. Again, no front seam, very compressive, very squat proof. Don't move at all in the waistband. However, this is where I think the raw hem isn't necessarily the best choice. Shorts of this length do not roll up on me usually, but sometimes I find that the hem of these kind of like fold up because there isn't a seam there to secure them in place. It barely bothers me. I still love wearing these and I wear them a lot for leg day, but just an FYI. These retail for $34.95 and are currently on sale for $26.21, but again, just last week they had a $20 bike short sale, so just keep your eye out. And finally, I'm going to talk about the seamless line. Now, I only have one item from this collection, and I think it's because I never really gave it a good chance, because the word seamless just makes me think of like, Gymshark Vital Seamless. Now technically, I don't think they considered this bra part of the seamless line, but that's where the rib stuff normally goes, so wherever, I'm putting it there. Harry has these launches sometimes where they don't belong to one particular line, which can get really frustrating because then you don't have a frame of reference for what the fabric is like, for example. But anyways, this is my favorite sports bra ever. I think they released it a few years ago, but it only recently came back and I'm trying to stop myself from buying it in every color. Again, it's in a size small. It's super supportive, but it's also super comfortable. The straps don't dig in at all. I really like the high neck. The rib material doesn't really pick up cat hair. I don't like love these boob seams, but I can live with them. I know a lot of people in their reviews with larger busts really like this one as well. And this is another one that I do wear without the cup pads. This one retails for $39.95, but is currently on sale for $29.96 and comes in a lot of different colors. On the topic of randomly categorized things, this top is actually an airy sports bra. This is the Gingham Square Neck Sports Bra. 
I have never worn this to the gym. I prefer just wearing it as a top. Again, it is hot as hell in Florida, so this is a great top because you're going to get sweaty. And this is just really cute. So it's got this like built-in shelf bra that deals with most of the nippage problems. So I don't get any nip on the outside of this despite it having white in it. It's got a really cute back. It's really easy to get on and off. I never feel like I'm going to fall out of it. I don't play like tennis or anything, but if I did, this would be so cute. So yeah, overall, if it doesn't have like a line tied to it, then it's kind of hit or miss. This is like a waffle fabric, which I wouldn't have expected. But if you see something like Real Me Ruffle or Real Me Macrame, you can know that they're part of that Real Me buttery soft low compression collection. They just have like additional little details. So overall, your goals and your seamless collections are going to be more high impact. If you want that traditional compression fabric, fabric, then goals is the way to go for that one. Otherwise, if you want high support, especially in the sports bras, then the seamless collection seems to be the way to go. Real Me is great for like daily life, for yoga. And again, I wear them for push and pull day because I just really love how soft they are. I don't constantly like feeling like I'm being squished. So I do like to wear those to the gym, but I know some other people don't. Overall though, I think Aerie has a great thing going with this offline collection. Honestly, a great thing going with the brand as well. I mean, I think their diversity initiatives over the last few years have been really powerful. It's really awesome to go on the website and see all of these different models. But yeah, I think they're a really good option if you're looking for some new active wear. And again, they did not pay me to say any of this. I sat and filmed this for an hour and got really sweaty out of my own, <laughs> out of my own will. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, comment, and subscribe. I usually make criminology content on this channel, but who knows? Maybe there'll be other videos like this in the future. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!